Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I bless and honor the Lord for this awesome privilege to stand before you from this platform this evening. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Angelia Jackson Butler, and my gift is evangelist. And I serve here at Glory to God Ministries, where we are located at 4000 West Fairfield Drive in Pensacola, Florida. I thank God for the leadership of Apostle and Richard and Lady Phyllis Curl, and I honor the Lord for my husband, Jeffrey Butler. Just before we move forward in tonight's study of God's word, let us open up with a word of prayer. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The last time I came before you, we dealt with a passage of scripture found in Luke chapter 18 and verses 1 through 8. And the crux of that study of God's word was men ought always to pray and not faint. And the message was entitled, The Essentials of Prayer. And tonight we want to follow up with a message concerning prayer. And if you don't mind, I invite you to turn with me tonight to Matthew chapter 7. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. And I'll be reading verses 7 and 8 from the King James Version. And the word of the Lord reads, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. God's word for God's people. So in this seventh chapter of Matthew, Jesus continues with his sermon on the mount, which is also known as the declaration of the kingdom. He speaks to us again concerning prayer. Jesus spoke in the previous chapter about prayer and gave us a pattern of prayer, and gave us some insight regarding prayer. So I want to make one thing very clear as we move forward in the study of God's word on tonight about prayer. As believers of Jesus Christ, there will be times in this life that we may feel like we are hedged in, blocked in, boxed in, but I want you to realize and know on tonight that we are never roofed in. God always makes a pathway so that we can have communion and relationship with him through prayer. So that's great news that we always have an avenue, have a highway directly to the throne room of God. So nothing and no one can take away our freedom to pray to the God of our salvation. All believers have an unconditional, personal, direct access to God through Jesus Christ in prayer. Who is our mediator. He is our go-between. He is our advocate. And we have access directly to God through him. So I've heard it said that prayer is just a conversation with God. And that is true, but it is much more than that. It is a time of transparency with God. It is a closeness that we have with our God. It is a time that we can get our heart and our attitude right before God. In other words, we can come in and we can repent and turn away from those areas in our life that does not please God. 
So a time that we can, according to the word of God, when we come here to God in prayer, that he can wash us and he can clean us up from the mess that we may have gotten involved in knowingly and unknowingly. So prayer is powerful. Prayer is the ability to enter into a secret closet with God and settle our issues. It is the ability to bring our flaws and our failures before an almighty God. It is this ability that we have that whatever the issue, we can make our petition known unto the Supreme Court of Heaven. It's nothing like the power of prayer. I get excited when I talk about prayer because I understand that things change when we're able to go to God in prayer. So it's that time that not only can we talk to God, but we also allow him to download in us. It's the ability to get into the presence of God and allow him to lead us and direct us and pour our heart out and cry out to God. It's a time that we can rejoice in prayer, a time that we can praise in prayer or worship just in the presence of the Lord. So tonight, even as we go further, in our discussion, in our unveiling of prayer, I want to talk to you concerning this passage of scripture. In the study of this text tonight, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there are levels of intensity as it relates to prayer. And I want us to become familiar with three words tonight from the original language and one word is a teo you're gonna hear me talk about that tonight a teo the next word is the teo in the original language and we'll get into what those mean and the last word of the three is cruo and so as the scripture that I just read in Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 7 says, it says, ask and it shall be given you. So ask, that first word I gave you is ateo in the original language. In the Greek, it means not only is it, is it asking, but it's a present imperative word, which means keep on asking. So as we delve more into this meaning of a tale, it means to be able to come before the almighty God and make our request known. It's this ability to come in and, and give him our desires when we ask. It's a craving. It's a longing. It's the ability to call forth into being in prayer. So this, if I had to categorize it as the Holy Spirit unveiled it to me, this is the base level of prayer. It is simply presenting a request to God and receiving an answer. So in order to receive, the condition is that we must ask. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. This requires that we approach God with an attitude of humility, understanding this, that he is the potter and we are the clay. Understanding that he is the landlord and we are the tenant. So we are submitted to his authority. Another word for a tale it means to ask with urgency. It means that craving, as I said earlier, it's the longing, it's this desire that I come in with. Even to the point of demanding. This isn't a demand where we tell God, you better. No, it's not that kind of demand. It is the demand on the basis of our faith. It is a demand that we ask with the authority of Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us this, that without faith, 
it is impossible to please him, meaning God, for he that cometh to God. So even as we approach and move in the spirit to be able to commune with God, this word says he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So when we come in, we have to know based on our relationship that we're not coming to a man because man can't do all this. We are coming to a holy God and we are making our requests known so much so that we are demanding with a sense of urgency that God, we need you to do this. So prayer, this word, a tale has so many dimensions to it. So the word of God, because we act because of the word of God, it tells us to do so, which denotes that he has all power to not only just hear us, but he has all power to answer us. See, in prayer, we are totally dependent upon God. So the Bible says, ask, that word, a tale, and it, it cannot be skipped over. It shall be. What is it? It is the thing that we ask for. So the thing can be any action. What is it that you need from God tonight? that you need to go before him with an oteo in your spirit. It's this action or this ability, God, I need you to act on this, or God, I need this to be accomplished in my life, or God, I need you to achieve this, God. So when we come in, we are asking based on any action, whatever it may be, the event, what is it that you need to occur in your life? What do you need to take place in your life that you are willing to go to God and ask him? So not only can it be any action or any event, it can be about any individual, whoever it is, ask. It can be concerning any object, anything that's mental, anything that's physical, Anything financially. See, it's so much to ask God for. But what is it that you are urging in your spirit about tonight? What do you need to take place or to occur in your life? What event is happening right now that you need God to move on your behalf? So not only can it be any action or any event or any individual or any object, but it can be any situation. Regardless of the problem, regardless of whatever issue you may be dealing with, regardless of the situation, maybe you're in the battle right now. And you need to ask God it. Because the Bible says, Ask and it the thing that you need. Whatever you're asking for, as long as it's according to God's will, it says it shall be given. So what you have in your spirit to go in with this a tale that's urgent, and to go and seek God through prayer, through this asking ability. It says it will be supplied to you. It will be furnished to you. Whatever the it is that you need. But first, you got to ask. First, you got to make your request made known unto God. So the Bible says you, it shall be given you. Or in other words, you going to receive it. You're going to be able to grab hold of it and seize what it is that you've asked for. The Bible declares in John 
14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. See, it is powerful. Whatever it is that you need, as long as you ask anything in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, according to the will of God, it shall be done. So we have this powerful spiritual weapon of prayer. And yet many people won't even use this weapon of prayer to ask. So many times we want somebody else to ask on our behalf. But God is beckoning us tonight to ask him for what it is that you need. The Bible says they do not ask. And for that reason, you do not receive. So why? That's my question tonight. Why would you stay in a place that you need help? You may be in a miserable place, but I got good news for you tonight. Ask him. Ask God to deliver you. So there's power when we come to God and believe by faith and understand the power that he has to hear his children and to answer us when we call. Jesus Christ said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So asking, as the Holy Spirit revealed, is, is that first level, that base level of prayer. Then the word tells us, just a little bit further, seek and ye shall find. I gave you one word earlier, a teo, that's ask. The second word that I gave you was zateo. That is seek. Again, that word is a present imperative word, which commands us not only to just seek one time, it is a continuation. It is seeking. It means to keep on seeking. This is a level of prayer. Where answers may not be as immediate. Seeking is a deeper level or a higher realm of praying than asking. See, while asking may deal with surface level, if you can call it that surface level. But seeking deals with understanding. It is being able to go in and, and not only just say, give me, but want to understand this, this God that has the ability to not only give, but I want to know you. I want to seek your face, not just your hand. So seeking is another level of prayer. Seeking, the seeker moves forward or moves further to pursue or experience the one that gives. They want to understand the power that rests in this God that can do anything. See, in asking, one comes and one goes. And they come back again. But the seeker is willing to remain and abide. Seeking will involve some separation. Because to seek means to investigate. It means to inquire. It means to go beyond just what it looked like on the surface. So seeking and seeking, that's an area where you say, Lord, I'm going, I want to, I want to know you so bad. I want to hear you. Hear your instructions for my life that I want to block out all the background noise. So I'm fast.
fasting today. I'm seeking the face of God. I'm studying my word because I need him. He is my necessary food. So the seeker is willing to invest time, energy, sacrifice, willing to pay the cost for the anointing. See, everybody don't want to seek. Some people still will stay out and just ask. But they'll never go to the next level in prayer that they want to see God in all of his glory. See, you usually don't seek something you already have. So the moment that you and I seek something, we are admitting that I don't have it. So I'm willing to search. I'm willing to look high and low. I'm willing to go wherever he tells me to go. I'm willing to do whatever he tells me to do. Because I'm seeking him. You know the word told us over in 2 Chronicles. If you would seek my face. See that's another level. Seeking requires effort. There is nothing about the word seek which carries with it a notion of being lazy. Even in the natural, you want a job. You ask for the job. Now guess what? You got to bust a move and go out there and look for the job, search for the job, investigate for the job. No, I know a lot of things are on this, you know, electronic and all digital and all this media. And, but, and you can do it from home and download, but it's a time you still going to have to get up and go and look at who you, who you want the job with face to face. Even they want to see your face. They want to see how bad do you want this job. So if that's a level beyond just filling out the application. Now you got to get up and go to the place you want the job at. So as it is in the natural, so is it in the spirit. It's one thing to ask a tale, to request it, to, to beg for it, to cry out for it. But it's another thing when you're willing to get up and do what he tells you to do. See, seeking is asking, plus it has some action to it. See, when you seeking something, you rearrange priorities. And you realize what really is essential in your life. Things come up because you see, well, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. I want him. It's no longer about give me. It's about, Lord, what can I give you? So seeking requires some action. It's that ability to recognize, no, that ain't him, because I know his voice. To be able to detect and to understand more about the God that has done so much for us. The Bible says, seek and ye shall. Find. See, in the seeking of God, not seeking man, but when we long for the more of God, God begins to open up our eyes so we'll discover some areas about him that we feel like we never knew before. So when we find him, when we learn more about him and understand and discover the attributes of who he is, that means he makes known things that were once invisible. They become visible now because you've shown that I want him and there's an unveiling in the presence of God. So seeking is not passive. Notice this in a passive position at all. It's not a passive posture or a lazy attitude. See, I told you earlier that that a tail, that asking level. See, some people 
would just get up and not get that answer that they've been asking God for. And they, they said, I ain't praying no more. So they resign themselves in prayer. They say, I ain't praying no more. Here go my resignation letter. But when you want something beyond asking, you're going to seek for it. I tell you, God at once seek us in this hour. Some have been asking, but they haven't been seeking. Seeking says, Lord, what can I do to be part of your answer to my prayer? See, asking is all about what you want from him, but seeking says, Lord, I'm asking you, but Lord, let me be the answer to my own prayer. Empower me so that I can be an answer and go beyond anything I've ever known. So often the prayer process results in a change in me. Uh huh. See, if the situation never changes, and I know I have some people out there that know what I'm talking about. Times that we went in and wanted God to change everybody else and change my situation and change my circumstance. And Lord, look at what they doing. And, look, and God ends up changing you and me. So that if they never change, I've changed. Because I've discovered something while I was seeking God. And I understand that if they never change, He's given me some insight and some vision and unfolded his mysteries to me concerning this life. See, the more I seek and surrender to the will of God in prayer, the more I, you, us, we become conformed into his image. We began to look like him because we've been seeking his face. We began to be the mirror that we can see God's reflection in us. So this seeking cannot be ignored. We'll become representatives. That's the salt and the light. The psalmist declared, I salt the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I found out something. When I hear people say, no, I can't, I can't seek him like that. But you know, when they got ready to issue them stimulus checks, I saw people going to the mailbox every day. It's here. They ran out. They met the mailman on the street. Is it here yet? I know people that called the IRS waiting on that check. And God began to say, you see how they seeking something that's temporary? It ain't even going to last. But what if they flip the script and begin to run after me and say, Lord, wherever you are, that's where I want to be. God, are you here? God, are you here? I got an expectation because I'm seeking him, not a stimulus package. He's the stimulus package. So this seeking is powerful. So God wants us to seek him with all of our heart and our soul. That sounds like surrender to me. <laughs> so if we seek him, the Bible says, we will find him when we seek for him with all of our heart. The Bible declares they, that they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. And also the verse I read earlier, we must believe that he will reward those who diligently seek him. That's somebody that's concentrated. That's somebody that's laser focused on seeking him. That's somebody that's so engrossed in seeking God that they have tunnel vision. 
Somebody around you can say, did you see that? I didn't see nothing. I'm so focused on God. I'm not even biting any distraction because I'm in a place with God. That gossip don't even bother me. Yeah, they talking, but that, that's not my focus. You know, they talk, it don't matter. My focus is on God. And in this day and hour, with so many things going on all around us, I want to encourage you. And I want to provoke you over into another level of prayer that you seek the face of God. Even as those 120 were gathered in the upper room, the Bible said they continued in prayer, which meant they were seeking the, the, what God had said that was going to be a promise for them. They didn't budge. They waited. They prayed. And they were waiting for the promise. And did it come? Yes, it did. So this seeking is something powerful. So I told you earlier, this word, a tail, means to ask. Zateo, which means to seek. But there's another level, even yet, in prayer. The Bible says, knock, and it shall be opened unto you that third word i gave you was cruo and cruo once again present imperative it means that this is a command that you and i keep on knocking mm. yes not just knock one time see if you just knock one time how bad do you want this door to be open. Cruel means to knock with heavy blows. It means I'm putting my weight on it. This ain't no light tap. But when you need something bad enough, you gonna stand there and knock with some heavy blows. It also means to bang loudly, to strike one against another. It means to smite. So you already have the connotation that this here means it's another level of prayer. And it means serious business. Knocking is a deeper level yet. It is prayer that is endurance. It is prayer that is persistent. When answers a long in coming. It's a long time you've been praying about that situation. But it still means that you knock and you're so persistent. It means to go through, to be able to live through, and remain resolute even in the midst of suffering. So it's beyond just the asking. Because I told you earlier, some people going to ask. And when they don't get their answer, they turn in their resignation letter for prayer. I ain't praying about it no more. And some people will go beyond and seek and really want the more of God. But this knocking is another level that I still don't have the answer. But I'm still going to knock and I'm still going to keep knocking and banging loudly on the door. Jesus told a parable in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 11, verse 5 through 10. And the cruel old level is, is really made manifest in this. He says, suppose basically you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, give me three loaves of bread. And a friend, he tells you, a friend of mine is on a journey and has come to me and I don't have any food to offer him. And suppose the one on the inside answers, don't bother me. <laughs> the door is already shut and locked and my children are all up in the bed. 
And I can't get up and give you anything. But according to the word of God, it tells us that because this man kept knocking, and another translation says, had shameless audacity, because I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm going to keep on knocking because this desire, this longing that I have, it makes me want to get your attention. We talked the other week about this woman and Luke 18. That's, that woman was knocking. That was persistence in her prayer. That woman kept saying, avenge me, my adversary. It's a shamelessness to it. Like, I don't care who looking, what they doing, but I'm going to keep coming back. I'm going to be persistent. And that's what this cruo is all about. This ability to not give up. That text that I gave you the last time was in Luke 18. Men ought always to pray and not faint. That means I don't get tired of opening my mouth and my heart and my spirit to God. Even if I don't see the answer, don't mean that he's not going to answer it according to his divine timetable. So my faith looks up to him, even as I remain resolute in my spirit, because I came in with faith, and my faith is continuing to push me, even as I'm knocking. Again, it means to be able to hit with heavy blows, and there are seasons in our life that the Bible lets us know. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. But even in the midst of the persecution, we can remain resolute in our commitment to God. Psalms 144 and 1 says, He teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Why do I need that fight in my spirit? Because, you know, it works both ways. I'm going to tell you, 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us that the devil walketh about seeking. Do you know that that seeking that the devil does is the same zateo, that same word that God wants us to do as it relates to him? See, the enemy is seeking. He's not getting tired of his job. He's still going about seeking. He's looking. He's investigating. So it behooves us that while the enemy is seeking, that we find our place in this cruo with God. Because we need to understand that when we are under attack, God will give us divine strategies and he will chart our plan uh, against the enemy through the power of God. Have you ever been there where it looked like all oh, hell was coming against you, but God gave you a strategy when it looked like you were going to be on the defense? God switched it, and now you were operating from an offensive mode because whenever you go to God in prayer, I want you to know you already have the victory. So we don't pray and we don't war trying to get victory. But our prayer is from the ground of victory. Victory is already ours. So it's been said, asking is using the voice. See, the Bible says when you pray, say. So when we ask, we use our voice. But when you seek, it's a, it's a whole body experience. It's being able to move into a direction with God. But knocking, that's when we bypass those obstacles that the enemy has tried to set for us. 
we must make everything a matter of prayer. I want to ask you tonight, how bad do you want it? Do you want it bad enough to ask for it? He wants to hear from you. Jesus, I told you at the beginning of this study that he was delivering his sermon on the mount to his followers. And that would be you and I on tonight. Those that are in relationship with the Father. How bad do you want it? Are you passionate enough about it? The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Do you want it bad enough that you are so passionate about it? I know that's my testimony. I'm passionate about prayer because I have so much that I'm covering, not just my life, not just my spouse. It's not no longer just us for it no more, but even things that are going on all around us. We have to be passionate about it and our commitment to God. See, the power of prayer overcomes enemies. The power of prayer brings healing. The power of prayer opens eyes. The power of prayer changes hearts. The power of prayer gives us wisdom. The Bible said, let him ask. And he gives us liberally this wisdom and upbraid and not. So if you want more of it, ask for it. But even in asking, I admonish us tonight to go further in your prayer life. That you're willing to make the sacrifice to turn down your plate. To hide yourself in the word of God. To meditate on it day and night. So that God can reveal more of himself to you. The reason that God woke us up this morning is the ability that he has that he wants to commune with the creature. Isn't that great news? That a holy God will want to commune and that's a closeness with us. I said to you before, nothing, I don't care what comes all around us, and tries to hedge us in and say you can't go nowhere and you can't leave here and box you in or block your path. I want you to know you still have direct access to God. There is freedom in prayer. So tonight, God is calling us into another level of prayer. Don't just stop at asking. Go the next step, seeking. Don't just stop at seeking when you still don't get what you've asked for and you've been spending time in the presence of God. Even if the enemy does come in, you have access and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So remember those words, a teo, a teo, and cruo. And let's move forward in our dedication to God in prayer. Even as I'm closing tonight, as an evangelist, I want you to know that God wants to hear from you. See, if you tell me to pray for you, I don't know enough about what you're going through. But as a believer, when you can go in and cry out your heart to God, he knows it anyway. But to be so intimately acquainted with him that you cannot wait to get in his presence. Why would you carry the load? Why would you carry the burden? When you have a God that says you can cast all your care upon him and he careth for you. So tonight, I thank God for this word. 
I thank God for the unveiling, the levels of intimacy, the levels of prayer, the levels of dedication that God is calling us to. And it is my prayer that even as this word is going forth on tonight, that you would find yourself going the extra mile in prayer. Just before we go, I'd just like to say a quick word of prayer with you. Father God, thank you for the listeners tonight. God, it's not by accident, God, that they were able to come on and see and witness this live. But God, it's because you want another level of intimacy with them. So God, we are praying tonight that you would touch their hearts and minds. That, God, they would know that all they have to do is come to you and cry out and ask you and seek your face and continue to knock. And the Bible, because of the word of God, says that we shall receive what we ask for. And if we seek, we shall find. And if we knock, it's going to be open access for us. So, God, thank you for this ability that we have through you to exchange. So God, I thank you tonight. And I pray and speak blessings over that one that's looking out. Continue to be with them as only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you.